So we are going to review, beginning with the vocabulary for Genki Chapter 4. This is pretty fun. So this first word here is quite an interesting distinction. The word is Arbeito. This comes from the German word Arbeit, meaning work. Um, this refers to particularly part-time jobs. Uh, for example, working at McDonald's or a convenience store or really anything that is not a salaried position. Um, you would make this distinction normally in Japanese. So if you ever have a Japanese friend that asks you, oh, do you have a part-time job? It sounds a little stilted in English, but the reasoning behind that uh, is because they, they generally differentiate it. So you, you don't claim necessarily to have a shigoto, which is like a, a salaried job, uh, if you're just working at McDonald's, you, you make that distinction. Uh, one of a few German words uh, that are written in katakana. Hello. Hi, Stephanie. She finally Welcome shows back. your face. I'm Welcome sorry. I'm get, I'm, I'll be right back. I'm just going to get dinner if that's okay. I'm yeah. sorry. The fire drill totally threw off my schedule. No, it's okay. I was I was a few minutes late as well, so it's no, no problem. Uh, you sound different. I have a better microphone because since we're recording it now, I, I got a, a higher quality so one. Mm -hmm. It's so smooth. Yeah, it's my podcasting mic. Uh -huh. Nice. All right, I'll join you in a hot sec then. Okay, I'm just going over vocabulary so you're not missing anything major. Okay. So the second word here is kaimono. Uh, so you guys have probably already learned the verb kao or kaimas, or it might be in this chapter, I can't remember, meaning to buy something. And the mono here means thing. So it literally means buying thing, right? So shopping. Um, this mono is the same kind of mono you see, like, um, the second character in the word dobutsu, meaning animal, meaning thing. Dobutsu meaning living thing. This just means thing. And this is very, very useful, this mono here. You can use it for a lot of things. Um, but, so, you might say something like, Ah, kyo wa kaimono ni ikimasu. Right, so kaimono ni, meaning to go towards shopping, and then ikimas meaning to go. So that's how you say, you know, let's go shopping or something like that. Uh, kurasu, uh, an English word, obviously, that has a little difference. There's two words for class. Kurasu tends to specify like a college level class in particular, whereas the word jugyo is often used for um, like elementary and middle school and high school classes, but they're more or less interchangeable, especially nowadays. Anata, I'm not sure why this is in chapter four, but uh, that means you. It's generally wise to just refrain from using it because if there's somebody that you're familiar with enough to refer to them, you should probably know their name in Japanese culture. So I would recommend, unless absolutely necessary, avoiding this. Um, and it's not always necessary in Japanese like it is in English, but we've gone over this pretty thoroughly, I think. Inu meaning dog. I, I quite like the kanji for this, like a little guy holding a burrito or something. Um, omiyage, souvenir. So I've written papers about this um, and plan to do some research on this in the future, but there's a strong gift-giving culture in Japan. If you take a week off of work for your holiday and say you go from Tokyo all the way up to the northern uh, city of Sapporo, for example, um, you might be expected by your coworkers to bring back something special to that region. That would be an omiyage. Um, so every region has some sort of meibutsu, a specialty, and that's generally what you do as an omiyage. Some companies have started to um, sort of prey on that mentality. So Hokkaido, where Sapporo is, is famous for their musk melons, pretty much cantaloupes, and they have Hokkaido melon flavored. Uh, Kit Kats that you can only buy in that area for the most part. So that's the kind of gift you would give as an omiyage. Uh, if you ever make international friends, like next semester, if they end up coming back from Kansai Gaidai to UT, um, it's very likely they might bring you an omiyage, and you should bring them one as well. Kodomo, meaning child. If you look at the kanji, the first character means child, the second means servant. So it's actually getting kind of popular to not use that second kanji there. Um, because it can be considered a little bit rude. So you'll often see ko and then domo written in hiragana. Gohan, meaning rice or meal. So most meals in Japan that are traditional 
uh, will consist of some amount of rice in addition to other things. Uh, so that word has kind of come to mean just meal. Like you might say, oh, let's have some bread together. Let's break bread together. Uh, you might just refer to it as rice. So you can say, gohan o tabemasu, or uh, ishoni gohan o tabemasu, let's eat a meal together. You can also say tabemono, or specified meal, like asa gohan, meaning breakfast. Shashin, picture or photograph. Um, so just don't forget that small ya there. Uh, tsukue, meaning desk, like a work desk in particular. Tegami, meaning letter, pretty one, pretty interesting one. The word te there means hand, and gami, coming from the word kami, means paper, so hand paper, pretty neat. Neko, I imagine a lot of you already know this word, uh, meaning cat. We got pang, this comes from the Portuguese word that sounds quite similar that I won't even bother trying to pronounce meaning bread as well, because bread wasn't really a thing in Japan until the Portuguese came around, I do believe, the 1600s, introducing lots of things like tempura and uh, bread. So both of those are actually from Portuguese. Hito, meaning person. Uh, a note with this one. So in English you might say, you know, oh, that guy is my friend, or oh, that girl is my friend, or oh, that guy is my dad. Uh, generally, you don't specify this in Japanese, so if you want to say that guy, that girl, you just say anohito, right? Or uh, sonohito, that person. Uh, you don't really have to specify gender when referring to people like that. Uh, any questions about these first two categories before we move on? Any, any of these particularly trip you guys up? No? Okay. Um, feel free to interject at any time, by the way, if you have questions or concerns, I am more than willing to answer. Or death threats. Yeah, death threats are always good, you know. It, 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 it's, it feels bad to be hated, but better than no feelings at all, that's what I always say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you know. how you always deliver it, and I'm always having to call you out, and that's when you finally laugh. <laughs> Listen, I try to go for deadpan until somebody calls me out on it. I know, that's why I like calling you out. I like ruining your like facade there. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, uh, continuing. Otera. So you might be wondering why, if you look at the kanji, the O is on its own, and there's kanji there. So just like you learned with things like ocha or omizu or okane, that's the honorific O that you have to attach to words that have particular significance in uh, historical Japanese context. So the word tera on its own just means temple, but you will universally apply that O there. If you say just tera, it's quite rude. Um, you'll see this used in particularly... Buddhist temples. There's a different word for Shinto shrines or Shinto temples or other temples, uh, but you'll sometimes see it in other contexts. This is a good word for anime and manga or travel in Japan because you'll see a lot of just hidden temples just kind of all over the place. So if you can recognize this word, you'll find some neat places. Koen meaning park. Uh, ko means public and en is like green space. Uh, so you might see these in, in different compound words as well. Suba. So this one is very important to remember where to put those lines. A line after su and a line after pa, coming from super maketo, I do believe. Uh, you generally just say super, but you might see the full super maketo sometimes. Uh, so just be extra careful to spell this one right. This word is a word I use very frequently in real life, so you should remember it if you can. Um, Depato, meaning department store. Now you might wonder. Why are they bothering to include this um, in a textbook like this? Uh, compared to the U.S. and other Western countries, department stores are still particularly huge in Japan. This came about after World War II, during um, sort of the Restoration Reconstruction era, uh, to imitate particularly American and French design. And Stephanie can confirm uh, I remember one day we were meeting to go up to a mountain called Takao in Tokyo, and we had to find each other uh, in a Starbucks attached to Shinjuku Station. Shinjuku Station is the most busy train station in the world, and it, uh, covers pretty much a whole city underground, but sprouting up from the uh, depths of the subway system, kind of like stalagmites, are 
dozens of huge department stores, 15 stories tall probably on average, filled with hundreds of different shops and restaurants and cafes, and it's so easy to get lost in those places. <laughs> really, really yeah. easy. Um, for cultural context, these department stores are actually partially responsible for the introduction of Western food to Japan. If you are interested in that, I recommend taking Horiguchi Sensei's food and film class next semester. We go into super duper depth about that. Uh, it's kind of what introduced hot European cuisine to Japan. So I highly recommend it. Uh, basute. So the word basu, meaning bus, as you might have guessed. And te being the kanji that literally just means stop. There's a few different words that means stop, but um, that's the one used in this case. Hospital, so bioin. I would highly recommend drilling it into your head uh, how to spell this word, being b small yo u e and n, because there will be words in the near future that sound near identical to this one that mean very different things. There's a word bioin that means beauty salon uh and i always got that confused so i still think i say it wrong so i'm afraid one day i'll be like seriously wounded and i'll be like you know you need you keep, like i need to go to the hospital oh, you want a haircut? And all they hear is i need to go to the hair salon want to get like a perm yeah it's like you like you're pouring blood out of your legs it's like oh yeah we uh we got some some hair bleach right here so <laughs> Yeah, I I don't take as much care with that as I should, so I, I recommend now while you guys don't have the other one to confuse it with, just make sure you get that right. Uh, hoteru, meaning hotel. This one seems pretty straightforward. Uh, honya, meaning bookstore. Now, this one's pretty neat. You see the character hon, meaning book. You guys have already learned book. Ya is a character you see often added to store names. Um, so you can pretty much add this to just about anything, and it makes it X store. So you learn the word pan here. Pan ya is a bakery, a bread store. Um, there's all kinds of words you can do that with. You can even add people's names. So if Stephanie opened a restaurant in Japan, she might call it Stephanie ya. It's common to also add san after ya. So instead of just honya, you might say honya san. Same san you say, you know, like Mr., you know. I don't know, Mr. Bible, Bible san, right? Um, same san is often used for ya. Machi, meaning town or city. Um, there's other words that have similar meanings. This encompasses cities in particular, but there's special words just to refer to a town, so be careful. Restaurant, meaning restaurant. Uh, so not too bad, I think. Uh, before we move on, any more questions or threats? Still looking for some threats. No. In these Super Bowl commercials, we take we take million dollar checks. Yeah, how about that Jerry Seinfeld? You know. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. You what? Know. So some. Uh, you no, know, I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it, it's fine. It's okay. So time, <laughs> time. Let's get to the time. What? Uh, yesterday, Kino. Again, be very careful to remember that u at the end there. I recommend when you're saying it to yourself, specifying ah kino u, right? You say kino, kino, which sounds a little different from kino, which would be without the u there. But just be extra super duper careful. Saki being a little while ago. Uh, I can't say that I've ever actually used this word before. Stephanie, do you use this word? No, I actually forgot it existed until you said it just now. Yeah, I've not come across that uh, Saki not in our <laughs> version of the book okay well it's in the older version I have downloaded so, uh, don't use it that's my suggestion <laughs> uh, your book also has the word meru I'm seeing meaning email um, that is common you don't say e meru you just say meru I've seen English e and then the word meru a couple times but jikan uh, meaning hour so g same G is in o'clock, and con meaning period of time. Stick them together, and you can make things like ichiji con, one hour. Uh, to continue, to say last week, you say senshu, right? Senshu. Again, make sure you remember that u at the end there. The character sen, and the, the word sen, uh, means last, previous. So you can add that to a number of time periods yeah or or it's like sensei or senpai so mm. they come before you 
Yeah. So if you, that helps you remember last week, yeah. think it's the week that came before. So mm. sen shu, sen pai, sen se. Um, and you can use it for other words. Isn't um, the kanji is also used in. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Sengetsu is the one I used in my last Sengetsu. month. I think, I mean, this is a quite common kanji, so uh, you'll mm. you'll come across this quite a bit. Um, toki. So before we learned uh, the G of Jikan, uh, and it can be read G or Toki. So Toki can be uh, the time that something happened. You can put it after verbs or um, nouns. So very common one is Kodomo no Toki. You'll see that a lot in Genki in particular. Kodomo no Toki, so the time of childhood, when I was a kid. So you could say, for example, Kodomo no Toki yoku supa ni ikimashita. Right? When I was a kid, I often went to the supermarket. Um, lots of uses for this. This one's going to be very useful. It's more of a grammar point than vocabulary, in my opinion. I think you probably will learn that as a grammar point later. Um, days of the week. These are pretty much brute force memorization, unless you are a fan of like Chinese astrology in particular, which I most certainly am not. Um, so if you look at the characters for these, they each have a different meaning. I know Tate was talking about them in the kanji chat on Discord, so take a look at that if you'd like more thorough explanations. But Getsu means moon, Monday, same as in English. The, the mun and Monday comes from the word moon. Uh, Kayobi is Tuesday, meaning fire day. Suyobi, meaning Wednesday, water day. Mokuyobi, being wood or tree day, Thursday. And then Kinyobi, being Friday, or the day of gold. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm sure there's some particular reason these are assigned as they are, but I do not know it. <coughs> excuse me. So, u verbs. Um, we have ao. To meet or to see a person. Uh, you can use this to say you are meeting someone or meeting somewhere. So you could say, Supa ni aimas, which means we'll meet at the supermarket. Or you could say, Tomodachi ni aimas, to meet a friend, right? You don't use the o particle here like you normally do with verbs that are considered transitive verbs in English. This is because it's not really exactly a transitive verb. In Japanese, it's a directional verb, so be sure to remember to use ni there. You will get marked off if you use o. If you say tomodachi o aimas, that will be marked wrong in class, so be very careful. Um, aru, so that means something exists, so we learn to say bookstore, honya. You can say honya ga aru, right? Honya ga arimas. Um, you use aru with things that are not living. Uh, keep in mind that for the context of aru versus iru, iru and imas, sometimes things like robots are considered alive. If you're quite a fan of robots, you might uh, anthropomorphize them. So you can use iru with things that aren't technically living, but simply animated sometimes. Uh, I, I believe you would, you would not use aru with even fictional characters. You still use iru. But um, aru can be used for lots of different ways. You'll later learn how to say that you are holding something. But if you want to say that you have something, you can use aru. So if somebody asks you what kind of book you have, you can say, Watashi wa manga ga aru. Watashi wa manga ga arimasu. You would translate this just as, oh, I have a manga. right? And this literally means, as for me, there is a manga present, or a manga exists. Um, but that's not how you would use it. You translate it, you know, to say I have something. Kao, just like in kaimono, uh, this means to buy something. It's transitive, so you could say manga o kaimas, manga o kao, to buy manga. Kaku being to write. Um, so the person ni here might be a little confusing. Uh, that would be if you're saying to write a letter. So I could say, watashi wa tomonachi ni. Tegami o kakimasu. Right? So, I am writing a letter to my friend, Kaku. Uh, we have toru, meaning to take pictures. So, you would say, shashi no torimasu, or shashi no totta for past tense. Um, shashi no toru. Uh, this toru has lots and lots of 
other uses, um, but this is the most common. It technically means to pull, because you used to, well, I guess what they say, pull and exposure, I think is the way they said it uh, in the olden days. So in things like UFO catchers, which are Japanese claw machines that often have really sweet prizes like anime figures and collectibles <laughs> and food, um, to grab something with the claw machine is toru. So don't forget it. <laughs> um, or else he'll come in and break your kneecaps. Yeah, with, with something I, I won from a claw machine. Mm. <laughs> Um, matsu is to wait. So you probably heard, ah, chotto matte. You know, ah, wait a minute. Uh, that's matsu, because matsu conjugates to machimas or matte if you do the te form. So uh, this is a very useful one. Just, you know, ah, chotto matte ne. Very important. Wakaru is to understand. Um, this one is very, very, very useful, especially as a non-native speaker of Japanese so you can say ah sumimasen wakarimasen or ah wakaranai meaning I don't know I don't understand um, so if somebody asks you a question and you don't know the answer you can say ah wakarimasen right oh I don't I don't know um, if you don't understand like you physically don't understand what they're saying you can say ah sumimasen yoku wakarimasen sorry I can't understand very well um, mm. there's a similar word shiru that you will learn at some point that means to know. Um, so if somebody asks you, you know, uh, how much money is this? You Would you say, would you use shiru or would you use wakaru? Like if you don't know, would you say shiranai, I don't know, or would you say wakaranai, I don't understand? You would use wakaranai because wakaru implies that you have put some level of consideration in and you've considered it and come to the conclusion that you don't know. Whereas saying shiranai, shirimasen, implies that you don't even care enough to know. You just state that you don't know. Um, so pretty much err on the side of wakaru in the future. Yeah, I think I get that wrong a lot still. But I know my favorite thing to do to soften my senses or like when I'm not sure but I still want to like give my opinion, I'll say, ah, yoku wakaranai kedo. Mm. Um, which means I don't know for sure, but mm. dot, dot, dot. Um, so it's kind of a nice way because in Japanese, they kind of prefer you not just being like, I think this. Yeah. Or like, this is my opinion. They kind of prefer you to soften it. So it's kind of a nice way to being like, as I understand it, or like, I don't understand it well, but... Um... Exactly, yeah. And um, yeah, it's considered rude to just... Dism it's, it's dismissive, I guess, to not say wakaru when you, when you have the choice to. Um, and for example, if you ask Google or Alexa something that it can't understand or it doesn't know the answer, it'll say... Uh, sumimasen, yoku wakarimasen, right? Uh, you know, sorry, I don't understand. I'll try again, or don't. You know. Uh, okay. <laughs> Last verb here is idu. So we talked about this a minute ago. It's the counterpart to adu that you use to mean something living is present. Um, you use ni with this. This is one of the few locational words that you use ni with. Um, so, for example. You could say Nihon de uh, Tomodachi ga imasu, or you could say Nihon ni Tomodachi ga imasu. I believe you can use both. I might be mistaken on that, but both sound right to me. But uh, you could say Ie ni Inu ga imasu. There's a dog in the house, right? So um, you probably wouldn't say de for that, I guess, because it's more localized. Perhaps I'm mistaken. I'm not entirely certain. But I think it's the difference between in versus at. Yeah, that's true. That's true, in versus at, and when you can use which is dependent. Um, adverbs and other expressions. So we have good eye. This one's very, very useful. Um, you generally won't be able to say with the precision of a minute something. So if somebody asks, oh, how long did you spend on that assignment? If you just say, <coughs> that sounds kind of weird, right? Like you spent exactly an hour on it. That sounds kind of unbelievable. So you'd say ichi jikan gurai desu, right? And I spent approximately an hour on it. Uh, you can use this with prices. So if somebody says, oh, hey, how much is that super rad Hatsune Miku figure you bought? <laughs> you could say, ah, nisen en gurai desu, right? It, oh, it's around 2,000 yen. Um, and I can't say with complete certainty, but I imagine it's pretty common to add that just to soften sentences as well, like is done quite commonly in Japanese. 
Gomen nasai. This means I'm sorry. This is quite formal. Sorry. Uh, if you say gomen nasai to a friend, they will probably assume you have done something severely wrong. So you might just want to use gomen to a friend, but if you're say you forgot to turn in something to a professor, it'd be normal to say gomen nasai or if it's late. Dakara, this is very, very important. You can add this to the end of any sentence where you would normally use des or da. And it means so, therefore, because. You can also put it at the beginning of some sentences. So you might say, Watashi wa America jin dakara hamburger o tabemasu, right? Because I'm American, I eat a hamburger. Um, you can also say at the beginning, I'm trying to think of an example. It's very casual to say it this way, but if somebody, if you explain something in one sentence, so you can say, Watashi wa America jin desu. And then if you want to explain something later, you can say, Dakara hamburger wo tabemasu. So it's pretty much the same. You can just kind of separate it that way. Takusan is a grammar point you guys have learned in this chapter. So you could say something like, Watashi wa America jin dakara. Hamburger o takusan tabemasu, right? So because I am American, I eat a lot of hamburgers. Um, I don't know why that toll is there. That's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, but it's kind of weird. I think about it. Oh, I guess it's a separate. Never mind. That's a completely separate grammar point. So um, if I uh, <laughs> yeah, if I wanted to say I'm eating a hamburger with Stephanie, I could say Stephanie to hamburger o Generally, you say toisho ni, uh, isho being together, ni being the particle used there. So, Stephanie toisho ni hamburger o tabemasu. But you can just say to and convey the same meaning a little more casually. Doshite is why, something you also hear quite a bit in anime. Uh, Sorry to cut it. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So, uh, for, um, so, uh, dako san, uh, does that stand hmm. alone? Does that stand alone? Like if we say like hamburger o taka, if we say sam hamburger o, mm. sorry hamburger o taka taku san o mm. I don't, I don't, I'm messing it up right now. <laughs> so I think I get what you're asking. You're saying if somebody asked you like how many hamburgers do you eat, would you just say taku san? Is that what you're asking? Well, do we put a particle in front of it? Because I noticed you said taka san o tabimas ta or I... you said tab. I, it's very flexible where it can go in the sentence, and I would recommend looking some more detailed examples. I think later in the book it might come up, but I tend to say, for example, hamburger o takusan tabemasu. You could also say takusan no hamburger o tabemasu. But I believe or just you, mm. or just takusan hamburger o. Remember the no is older. Yeah, you could just say yeah hamburger o takusan tabemasu or Takusan hamburger o tabemasu. It's very, very fluid. Um, I, I think I've kind of realized I've been saying it the old-fashioned way for like the past five years. So I, I would recommend. Sound like a grandpa. Yeah, I would recommend looking up um, just different sentence structures to get used to it. Uh, we'll, we'll send a message about that in the resource chat later. Um, but it's very flexible. So uh, I tend okay. to prefer putting a particle as normal and just putting it right before the noun, though. Like a okay, hamburger will talk some time Yeah. Any other questions from you or anybody else so far before we finish? And that will be reviewed in the grammar. Um, the Takusan will. Yeah, that'll be there as well. Uh, okay, so doshite, yeah, meaning why. You can put this at the beginning of any sentence as well. So you could say, for example, doshite uh, hamburger wo tabemasu ka? Why are you eating a hamburger? And you could say, Onaka ga sita kara, because I'm hungry, right? Uh, you can just say, Doshite on its own. So if Stephanie said, Ah, supa ni ikimasu, right? I'm going to the supermarket. I could say, Doshite, why? Right? Other ways to say why do exist as well. This one. Naze ka. Naze ka. Yeah, or nande. nande. Or, um, but they have different use cases. Doshite is a pretty good one. It's common to say out loud and also common to see written. So, um, so next is hitori de. So if you look at the kanji there, you'll see the kanji for one ichi, and then hito, uh, one person, 
is pronounced hitori. It's an exception to standard counting rules. And adding <laughs> de, meaning at, the position, you're at just one person, so you're alone, right? Hitori de. Um, so you could say, you could throw that at the beginning of a sentence. Stephanie could say, ah, hitori de supa ni ikimasu. Right, I'm going to the store alone. Yeah, I don't need you, Bryce. <laughs> yeah, you don't need me to. to he told you that I to, eat alone. To buy so, all those uh, you hamburgers. Might hear it in a lot of, you hear it in a lot of songs that mm. are very depressing. I feel that's true. It's that very, many songs. I mean, a lot of songs about loneliness coming out of modern Japan. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons behind that, but uh, okay. Next is moshi mosh, which is how you answer the phone if somebody calls you or calls you online or on discord in japan uh it's it's written moshi moshi right and there's a tendency in japanese to omit the last vowel sound if it ends a word so like des you don't normally say desu right and similarly in this case you really emphasize you say moshi mosh right um so, I mean, this is just kind of a universal greeting. I think it was used for radios and stuff during wartime. Lots of reasons. Uh, okay, location words. So, we have right, which is migi. Um, so, you could say it's on the right, like migi ni aru, right? Uh, or you could say to the right of something, like watashi no migi ni arimasu. It's to my right. You could do the exact same thing with hidari, meaning to the left. If you look at the kanji, they're quite similar. You'll learn those later on, but um, they're neat to be similar like that. Mae being in front of something or before something. So you could say, I'm going to do a, a slightly complicated sentence here. The word niwa means garden. I believe you learned that before in one of the previous chapters. You could say, Watashi no ie no mai ni niwa ga arimasu. Right, watashi no ie no mae ni niwa ga arimasu. So, in the front of my house, there's a garden. Uh, you can do the exact same thing with ushiro. So, you could say, you know, watashi no ushiro ni. Uh, you could say, uh, I don't know, seki ga arimasu, meaning there's a there's a seat behind me. Uh, naka, meaning inside, the middle. You see this one oh, all the sorry. time. Sorry, can I put in one more time? I'm sorry. Don't apologize. We're here to help you guys, so please feel free to ask questions at any time. What's up? Um. So, so uh, this is a little bit off topic, but like you said, ie, like which means house, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, there's also ie, like okay. I was wondering how you differentiate because sometimes I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm like listening to like the lectures, and mm. sometimes I think that they pause and they're like ie. Uh, watashi wa something, and I'm just like, did they just say no to something? So I end up putting like a, mm. I don't know. Like, how do you how do you differentiate? So every hiragana is technically supposed to be pronounced for the same length in words. Now that doesn't always happen in practice. Um, mm -hmm. it, so with ie in particular, meaning house, it's going to be fast. You're going to say ie, usually a, a short, uh, short word. They'll often switch it out with uchi, meaning home. Uh, to if if there's any worry about ambiguity, but it just in general with me, the word no e the the um the pitch accent's a little different, so the second e tends to go up. So if you hear e like e you can kind of assume that's not house. If if it if it sounds like it's not the shortest possible way to say it, they probably mean no. Uh, that's not very okay. helpful. Usually, once you, you mean get, house. Once you get more used to it, it'll be clear from context. I think most of the time, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, you yeah, usually house is gonna sound pretty much like the shortest way you could say the the, the sound e and et together, to the point it almost slurs, in a lot in okay. most cases. Um, so probably okay. if you're if you're asking the question, they're probably just saying no at the beginning of a sentence because you wouldn't always literally translate it as no. Do you have any other tips for that, Stephanie? Because I, I that's not. Particularly that's the answer. exact same. No, <clears throat> that's the same recommendation. Is like if I think it sounds pretty short, I'm just going to assume it's house. Also, with the context of the rest of the sentence. Um, yeah, like um, yeah. I, I guess one one trick would be if it ends in. So let me let me rephrase this. Because you're saying null by saying e yet, the sentence is almost always going to end 
in a negative conjugation. Now, there's obviously exceptions to that, but if the sentence ends in a in positive and it sounds really short, then you can be pretty certain it's, they don't mean no. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, that not, makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Again, everybody, feel free to ask questions or interject at any time. You don't have to wait till I get to a pausing point. We're here to help. Um, yeah, I asked that question, so I apologize. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. So naka is inside. So um, you might say something like uh, "supa no naka ni neko ga." Imas. So inside of that supermarket, there happens to be a cat. Uh, naka is very useful. Kuruma no naka ni imas. Kuruma being car. Naka ni imas being to be inside. So watashi wa kuruma no naka ni imas. So I'm inside a car. Now the differentiation between using naka ni there and saying you know kuruma ni imas or something like that is the difference between saying uh, I'm in the car versus I'm inside of the car in English. So. Usually they're interchangeable, not always. Ue is the same structure, so kuruma no ue ni uh, neko ga imasu. There's a cat on top of the car or on the car. Um, yeah, so that's location words. We also have shita. Shita means under, so kuruma no shita ni neko ga imasu. There's a cat under the car. Uh, this tends to be pronounced without saying the e. And that's pretty true of words beginning with the character she in general. So you don't really emphasize saying kuruma no shita ni. You, you normally say kuruma no shita ni. Kind of like a sh and then just ta on its own. Uh, so soba is near. Um, this is um, soba is not. Nari. It's chikaku for us. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, they have chikaku or tonari in the newer one. Soba is an older way, but I have heard it used a lot. Yeah. So it might not hurt to know, but yeah, it's it's worth knowing. It's common in songs, so like it's kind of a romantic way. Like if you want to say kanojo wa soba ni imasu yo, like oh that girl's right beside me, like she's my girlfriend's right beside me. It kind of sounds very intimate. Uh, chikaku is just more objective nearby, um, so. You could say, if somebody's asking, hey, where are you? You say, ima watashi wa supa no chikaku ni ari, or imas, right? So I'm near the store right now. Or you could say, uh, watashi no kuruma wa ie no chikaku ni arimasu. Like my car. Imasu. Oh, yeah, arimasu. <laughs> yeah, you could say, to say like my car is near the house. Yeah, just be, yeah, be sure to get that aru or iru there. I sometimes just instinctively <laughs> I still say one. Yeah, it's just, it's not something you have to think about in English, though. So. Uh, yeah, so Tonari, so Tonari is next to, um, so say you work in a Starbucks and the next door place is, um, mm, like a train station. You could say, so Eki is train station, you could say, uh, for example, Staba no Tonari no. Eki, right? The the next the the station next to the uh, Starbucks. It's more specifically like has to be right next to you. Uh, Tonari literally just means neighbor. So you might be familiar with the movie. I believe it's called Tonari no Totoro, right? My neighbor Totoro. Uh, a lot of use for that. Aida is between. So for example, Watashi to Watashi no Computer no aida wa microphone desu, right? Between me and the computer is a microphone. Um, so uh, that's, a, that's a kind of complicated example. Stephanie, can you think of a more straightforward example for that one? Because that, that's a. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, depa to 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 shokan no aida ni kisaten ga arimas. Yeah, there's a cafe between mm -hmm. the department store. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that one more time. Stephanie, would you repeat that one? I already forgot what stores I used. Can I use different ones? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Um Supa to Kisaten no Aidani Starbucks ga Arimas. So the library and the supermarket are between Starbucks or Starbucks mm. is between the library and the and the supermarket? 
Correct. Yeah, the third okay. thing is between... So, because tol means together, like and, like we learned. So, a tol, b no aida. Whatever is after the aida there is between a and b. So Yeah. So, between a and b is c, essentially. Mm -hmm, exactly. Really confusing because we kind of say, like, star. we say Starbucks is between this and this. It's like mm. back. Yeah, yeah, just think of it as between A and B is C in English. Think yeah. of it that way instead. Because of the different oh. sentence structure, you kind of have to think about it that way or it's incredibly confusing. Okay, so between A and B is C. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, and then, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of more complicated sentence structures you'll learn with these words down the line. They can stand alone. They can be answers to questions. They can be used as prepositions. There's all kinds of uses for these. Uh, yeah, so... Are there any overarching questions about vocabulary? Because um, we've gone over quite a bit. There's quite a bit that's going to be on the exam tomorrow. And quite a bit of this, especially the things from the adverbs and on, are vital to know. So is there anything in particular that's tripping you guys up? I know directions tend to be confusing. Anybody? Or you guys You guys all good? You're going to get hundreds on, on these words? I'll ask gonna, a question. Gonna try. Yeah, what's your what's your question? Okay, so I what is your when you were first learning, what was your like method of like learning the directions? Like there's memorization, but for just you location know, words in general? Yeah, sorry, sorry, location words, yes. Um for me personally, I pretty much did the same thing I do with it with most of the kind of learning. I'll I'll come up with a specific sentence to use that word and just make myself repeat that sentence and then later if I need to say, how do I say, you know, neighbor? Well, I remember Tonari no Totoro is like, you know, beside Totoro, like my neighbor Totoro. So I'd yeah. remember, I'd remember Tonari no Totoro has the word neighbor in it. Which word is it? Well, it's Tonari. So then it's a direction word. So it's X no direction ni dot dot dot, mm. right? So... I, I would be able to construct the sentence from that. Example sentences are my way to do that. A lot of people prefer mnemonics coming up with something uh, to help you remember that. Like, uh, I don't know, if you look at, I'm thinking, like the word ushiro, you might think, uh, you, you might come up with some clever sentence to remember. I don't know. I'm not good at mnemonics at all. Uh, Stephanie might have a more helpful way for memorization. Okay, I use a mixture. I use both example sentences and mnemon I can't say that word mnemonics. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Um, so, for example, my I think of my front. So, like in front of me, it's my front. Um, so that's yeah, how, yeah. like yeah, like um, so that I remember weird things like that. And like for some reason, ue I remember tsukue no ue just because it rhymes. Which means on top of the desk. Mm. Um, so, oh. like, I just do a whole mixture of things. Yeah, um, I kind of similar. Like, or like, I'll take animes I know. Like, for example, Parasite. Like, I know Migi is right because Migi yeah. is a band guide, so mm -hmm. I, I memorize stuff. So, yeah, that makes sense. That's the best okay. way for me personally. If you can associate it with something you have particular interest in, it's going to be even easier. There's there's a famous song from the 50s, I believe, that I really like, called Ue o Muite, means look up while you walk, and it has the word up in it. It's a great song. Yeah, I am a nerd. For... I love that yeah. song. I think every... It's, it's so sad. I don't like it. It is sad, but um, his life was kind of sad, so... That's why I don't like it! <laughs> well, reasonable, reasonable, but... Yeah, but if you can remember that the song means look up while you walk, and the first word's Ue, you'll probably remember that means up. Um... I, I'm but there is a chart. There's a chart on, in the book if you scroll down that I liked yeah, for the see. directions. Um, cool, cool, cool. It's not oh, in, where is it, it? Is it not in this it's, book? It's not in the down, version I have downloaded. It's on page 106 of your guys' books. Um, yeah, but, that uh, one helped me a lot. I would cover it up with my finger and then try to do it. Mm, that's a good way. Or even um, putting sticky notes on your own stuff at home, so on your desk, you know, write the word ue. Um, I highly, highly recommend for words like this especially if you have any interest in going to Japan soon, learning the kanji along with these words, because that will make it easier, in my opinion. If you look at the kanji for ue here, you see it, it's literally a stick pointing up out of the ground. If you look at naka, it's a stick going through something in the middle, on the inside. Um, and those kanji will be everywhere in Japan. So, personally, it's easier to remember both 
together than it is just to remember the meaning of the word for these particular words. But not everybody works that way. Um, yeah, so any more questions? What's up? I have an online version of the book that has that's like the most up to date. I've I've sent it out before. Yeah, I'll I'll get that from you after this lesson. I sent it just now in the main chat. Take it. I've I've sent it out a million times. Price. Take yeah, it. no, I know. I I have it somewhere. It's just when I needed it, I had to find it really quick, so I just downloaded this version. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I have so many textbooks on my computer for studying that are all scattered in different locations. I need to organize them. Pirate. <laughs> they are hard. So Stephanie, yeah, uh, yeah, ahoy, 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 no, 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 Kaizo. Thank you, Marine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Marine. Oh, because I remember it's like it's like Kazoku, so I remembered Kai Kaizoku because it's like a pirate. Your pirate family. Yeah. I remember it from Kaizoku. One Piece mainly. I was just oh. gonna say One Piece. Yeah, yeah. I watch One Piece. Is, they say pirate all the time, so I'm just too scared to watch it. Yeah, it's too long. I can't. It's too yeah. long. I can't do it. <laughs> Um, 948 so you, episodes going strong. 948? <laughs> That's too yeah. much. Is it the only reason I know is because my roommate watches it so much. Hold on, is it actually that many? 948? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's worse than Yu-Gi-Oh! And I like, watched all of Yu-Gi-Oh! There's that many episodes, and then there's also like 20, I think, around 20 movies. You oh can spend God. the rest of your life just watching that. <laughs> oh, no. How do you how um, make that many episodes around one topic? <laughs> I, I mean the manga the manga is over a thousand chapters now no, I think no. it's 1100 chapters it has like 150 sure. beach episodes Eat. and like 10 Christmas specials and <laughs> it, Ichiro Ada I think I think this is now I think that's who wrote it he says 5 to 10 years still ahead that he's got planned for writing it oh he's not God. done yet he's just wanting the money at this point I think <laughs> Man, I mean, if you just translate that and read it, you don't even have to take Japanese anymore. You'll just become <laughs> fluent by the end of it. But you'd sound like a pirate by the end of it. <laughs> well, you know, that's okay. There's there's worse. Uh, what? <laughs> You'll get like a free donut once a year at Krispy Kreme if you do that. I forgot about that. <laughs> so, Stephanie, do you want to begin with the grammar since I've done all this vocab? Wow, okay, sure. <laughs> so, oh, no. we're going to learn first X ga arimas or imas. So these are two verbs that show basically existence, kind of like is, I guess, or have. So um, so there is a cat or I have a cat. It's just based on context, which one that you would assume I'm is, right, Bryce, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, terebiga arimas, there is a TV, but if you're talking about yourself, like, watashi wa terebiga arimas, but again, later you'll learn a word that means a bit better how to say I have. But sometimes um, it can be a little too literal, so this, this one's yeah. a good all-around way to say it, honestly. Yeah. So, uh, um, arimas, which its dictionary form is aru, is for inanimate, non-living objects, whereas iru or imas is used for living things um so if the robot is sentient enough you can use imas mm. i actually asked sensei that when i took this class <laughs> you weren't there Bryce, but mm. she just got this like blank look on her face and she was like <laughs> <"Are>? huh? <laughs> and i was like and she's like what <laughs> and I was like, okay, that doesn't answer my question, but <laughs> Artie um, did the same thing. Like she's she had she had a Pikachu plushie and she's like, okay, we say Arimas and we're like, Pikachu she's like, No, Pikachu is live to me. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, that's I'm sorry. That's so awesome. Okay. Yeah, because I thought about plants, and I'm pretty sure plants you use emos because they're technically living. I can't remember for sure, but I think they're emos if I remember right. Um, but yeah, you don't want to use arimas for a human, because I think if I recall correctly, if you use arimas for a person, it may give the connotation they're an object, which like, poo, poo, you don't want me doing that. Okay. Um, Mm. So here's the example sentences say you can, it can mean have or own something. So you could be ah terebi ga arimasen. I don't have a TV. Or terebi ga arimas. Again, television is not a living thing, so you use arimas. Um, 
It's also really useful in phrases like jikan ga arimas. So I have time. Or if you're wanting to ask if someone has time, you can say, ah, jikan ga arimas ka? Do you have time? Um, literally, do you own time? Do you have it in your possession? Mm. Essentially, it's the same as English, where it's like, do you have time? Um, so you can also do it when an event will take place. So this is really nice for you guys, because now you can say that you have a test tomorrow. So you can say, I don't think you guys know the word tomorrow yet. So we'll just say like, uh, uh, oh, you know what? Oh wait, yeah. you guys know it? Oh, okay. That's a test or God, you must. Yeah. yeah, you got it. See, and like you can also just be, like be like, yeah, mokyobi ni testu ga arimasu. So yeah, you guys. And so sensei might actually start using that now because now that you know sentences like this, she may say, ah, ashita no shukudai wa shime like shime kiri desu or something like that. You know, um, oh, the deadline is tomorrow for the homework. Yeah, ashita no shukudai no shime kiri wa ashita. Uh, wait, that's kind of not duh. <laughs> Whatever. Can <laughs> rise <laughs> ignore that. Price is, that, that. is that deadline? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I literally you. just said tomorrow's homework's deadline is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a tomorrow choice. <laughs> sadly, sadly, the, I would say the same thing in English, so <laughs> it's fine. Anyways, so yeah, you can use that. Um, but again, oh yeah, I can't control the page. I just tried to down. Um, <laughs> price oh, go cool. down. Okay. Because it talks more about emos, doesn't? Yeah, there it is. Um. But again, emos is for living things, persons, cats. So if you want to say I have a cat, neko ga imas. Um, for me, it'd be takusan neko ga imas. I have a lot of cats. Lot so of cats. there's a lot of cat. <laughs> um, so, so do yeah. we only use the particle ga when we're talking arimas and imas? Um, at the moment. That's not yeah, a place me. Well, yeah, yeah but I, it's yeah. what you're gonna hear for the most part. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, place me, thing or person got arimas or imas. Yeah. For now, that's all you need to know. That's yeah, that's the sentence structure you're learning here. But if you if you do see it otherwise, it's not necessarily a mm -hmm. mistake. So just be aware. But for now, just worry that it's ga. Don't yeah. don't yeah don't worry about getting fancy with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was one distinction. So yeah, here before, so you see that they say kayobi ni testo ga arimasu, but then they say ashita wa nihongo no kurasu ga arimasen. I'm pretty sure you could also say kayobi wa testo ga arimasu, and it would still be pretty much just the same meaning. The ni just um, emphasizes that it takes place specifically on Tuesday, but you might see it both ways. Cool. Stephanie, do you want me to do number two, or would you like to? You do it. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, um, you guys know the word doko, and you also know asoko being over there, and koko being here. So you, you know all the different ways to specify directions, and in this chapter you're supposed to be studying the preposition location words, so you can make really complex sentences describing where things are. And this will be particularly useful if you do end up in Japan, say for the 2020 Olympics, which aren't happening in 2020 anymore, or um, if you just happen to be lost and need help. So I remember asking a police officer or a security guard, um, I was looking for somewhere called Shinjuku... Gyoen, which is the Shinjuku Imperial Gardens, and I literally just walked up and said, "Ah, Shinjuku Gyoen wa doko desu ka?" And he pointed and then decided to to walk us there. So he like walked us like a kilometer to get there. But he might have said something like, "Ah, Shinjuku Gyoen wa asoko desu." So Shinjuku Gyoen's over there, or you could say Shinjuku Gyoen wa asoko ni arimasu yo, meaning Shinjuku Gyoen is over there. Um. You might ask, so your your teacher might ask you. Sensei might ask you, "Shukudai wa doko desu ka?" She might say, "Stephanie no shukudai wa doko desu ka?" And um, say, "Stephanie for some reason put her homework under her own desk." She might say, "Shukudai wa tsukue no shita ni arimas," or "Shukudai wa tsukue no shita desu." Right? Both of those have slightly different implications meaning it's under the desk um, and so you can almost treat this like a, a mad libs kind of game with the sentence structure they they explain here so whatever you're talking about so McDonald's makudonaru wa 
uh, so you could say Eki Station, Eki No, and then I want to say it's behind, but, or sorry, if I if I want to say it's beside the station, well, I could do it's right next to. It. I could say Tonari this. So McDonald's is right beside the station, or it's inside the station. I would use Naka. So if I wanted to say, uh, let me think, let me think. What's a what's a what's a, a, a word you guys know? Uh, if I wanted to say the temple is in the park using this sentence structure, can somebody tell me how I would say that? Say that again. So the temple is in the park. So if I say if I say temple a doko desu ka? And you know it's in the park. Otero wa koen no no shoot. Naka des? Hi, yeah. so that's net. You could say no naka des or no naka ni arimas. Both is good. Uh, let's do one more example. How about a complicated one? I want to say. <coughs> mm, so, Sati Yuan is Baskin Robbins. So, <laughs> I happen to know for a fact that the Starbucks is between Baskin Robbins and McDonald's, right sandwiched in between the middle of them. Can somebody construct a sentence like that using this? So, Baskin Robbins and McDonald's. Starbucks is right in the middle. How would I say that? Uh, wait, so what's in the middle? Uh, Starbucks is in the middle. Of okay. Baskin Robbins and McDonald's. Okay. Makuro Donald's do. Baskin Robbins. Uh, no star Starbucks. Mm, I need ga arimas. So this one's a, a little complex. Uh, so you you'd want to start off with Starbucks in this case. So Starbucks wa, and then how would you say uh, between McDonald's and Baskin Robbins? Baskin Robbins is Sati One because it has thirty one flavors. Sati One flavors. So Starbucks okay. la, then how would you say between Sati One and McDonald's? Sati One to wait. Sati One mm. would we say at all? Sati One so, to. Yeah. You got that so far. Makuro uh, dano, makuro dano no. <laughs> no. And then I don't know the no. Well, would we say would we say Starbucks again? So you say no aida des, right? I so, okay. Hi. I think she's confused because earlier we said like the pato to supa no aidani Starbucks ga arimas. Yeah. So there's a difference here in that we were using arimas earlier. Now this is des. So right. It's a slightly yeah. different. Sl- setup. Slightly it's different. Up. Yeah. That's that's using their sentence structure here in the book versus the slightly more complicated conversational one. So but... for this one compared to other the earlier sentence, we're using Starbucks or whatever we're looking for. Is first instead of third. Um, so the subject of the sentence is always going to be attached to wa, which is first, right? So the the sentence mm-hmm. structure example is, is here. So essentially, in both examples, the thing you're talking about predominantly starts it. So say we're talking about Starbucks. So you can say Starbucks, or you can just say Staba. And with McDonald's, you can also just say Maku. So it's a lot easier than saying Maku Donadoodle, right? Just say Maku. So say we're talking about McDonald's, right? Maku wa. So McDonald's is. And then if we wanted to say in the park, you could say koen no naka des, right? Like the one we did before. But if I want to say McDonald's is between two things, well, what are the two things? It's Y and Z. So say McDonald's is between Starbucks and Baskin Robbins. You could say makudo wa or maku wa Starbucks to sati one no aida des, right? So you're, you're treating... Y to Z as one object, if that makes sense. This one's pretty complicated. Um, I'd recommend looking at a lot of examples for it. I I kind of doubt she'll put it on the test. I have no reason to say that other than it being complicated. But with a little repetition, it will stick. I mean, j- just think of anything joined with to as kind of one noun. It becomes a noun meaning both of those. So, mak to to. Starbucks is McDonald's and Starbucks, right? So, X wa makudo to Starbucks no 
Ida Des. This it's the same idea, same structure as this one, except you're just joining two things with this tool here. So I think let's try let's try one more example uh, with Ida using this particular structure here. So let's say um, um, oh gosh, the bread is between the dog and the cat. Pan wa inu to neko no ida desu. Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, it it really helps to, to 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 kind of group it out into chunks and think, yeah. What whatever y is, it's still just y, but y just happens to have two parts to it in the specific example. So it functions the same way, but since you have to have two things to be between something, you gotta specify that. So that was a little complicated. What's up? It seems like you could say something directly strange to Kenta and he won't understand it, but he'll somehow manage to accidentally say something even more frightening. Oh wait, I forgot. I said konbanwa papa. Konbanwa papa. Oh. Yeah. Hey mama. <laughs> hey, hey mama. I love he it. does that all the time. <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Um, that's that's awesome. Let's uh, let's break down just a couple more of these examples because these are probably the most complicated part of this chapter. So they have ginko wa toshokan no tonari desu. Right. So ginko is bank and it's the subject so ginko wa toshokan no so it's something relative to the library right so tonari is right next to it it's beside it it's neighboring it so ginko wa toshokan no tonari desu the bank is right next to the library all right kasa is umbrella kasa wa teiburu no shita desu this is the most simple form of these location words we're talking about the umbrella. Where is it? Something relative to the table. Under it. Right? So, kasa wa teiburi no shita desu. Last example they have here in the book uh, is restaurant wa depato no. Sorry, I, I, I misspoke. Restaurant wa depato to byoin no aida desu. The restaurant is between the department store and the hospital. And they go on to explain that one can use any of the above location words together with a verb to describe an event that occurs in the place. To use these phrases with verbs such as taburu and matsu, one will need to use the particle de. So, watashi wa to hagen dasu no mae de merisan o machimashita. So you guys are getting into really pretty complicated sentences at this point. These are the kind of things that you can use to have real conversations with Japanese people. And I do suggest, through some means, doing so because that is what will reinforce this the most and keep you motivated if you make real friends that you want to build a relationship with and you'll learn yeah, new not things them from fake 2d friends right yeah no no to you know 2d girls you can't you can't talk to them anymore <laughs> um, but i waited for mary in front of the hagen place um so yeah you can say so eki again being train station eki or so, watashi wa eki no naka de machimasu. I'm waiting inside the station. Uh, well, I, I got confused with the waiting for. Like, how do we know? How do we like present like oh, we're waiting for somebody? So, matsu is the verb for to wait. And in, oh, yeah. in Japanese, it's transitive. So, the thing that you're waiting on is attached to the old particle. So, if I'm waiting for a new game, say I'm waiting for. Um, the new Mario game. I could say Mario, Mario game o machimasu. Oh. So Mario, wouldn't we say Mario no game or would we say game o no Mario? Can uh, we say that? Or we... Mario no game, if you're going to specify like uh, the Mario game. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. So Mario no game o uh, machimasu or is it machimasu? Machi. Chi. Machi. Machimasu. Yeah, machimas. Uh, past tense, which Stephanie will explain here in a moment, uh, is past tense. So you'll see this pretty often in uh, like Akihabara, the anime district of Japan. There's lots of stores that do like 
early morning releases of new games, and the night before, you'll often see hundreds of people lined up to buy them. So you might say, mm, Akihabara no naka de Mario no game o machimashita. Right? So inside of Akihabara, I waited for the Mario game. Um, pretty useful. Again, this is a, this is quite a good sentence and a pretty complex structure. So I recommend making use of it to somebody if you can. Stephanie, would you like to do past tense? I guess since you already volunteered me. <laughs> well, you know. I'm kidding. Got to get some use out yeah. of that microphone, Stephanie. I don't have a nice microphone like you do. Yours sounds like pretty much as good as mine will once it gets compressed. Seriously, I don't know That's how you because it's a new laptop. Yeah, it has a really, really good microphone. Well, thank you. You're making it blush. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so why is it? I'm just saying stupid stuff. Don't mind me. Okay. So, the usual. you guys... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So, you guys learned normal verbs, if I remember correctly, last chapter, right? So, now you are learning it in the past tense, which is super duper helpful. So, yay. Maybe. Um, so, for we have this little chart here. So, if you want to do present tense affirmative, it's mas, like you already have known how to do. Um, if it's negative present, it's masen, as you already know how to do. So, for example, benkyo shimas, benkyo shimasen. So, I will study, I will not study. Now we can say past tense. So, if someone says, like, ah, nihongo o benkyo shimashita ka, did you study Japanese? Past tense, you can say, ah, hi. So past tense, um, you'll see a very common pattern where past tense things end in ta. So when in doubt, if you hear a ta, it probably means it's past tense. Mm. So what you do is you take the su and masu. Uh, you don't say masu, you say mas. But I'm doing this for the sake of um, pointing it out. So you drop the su and you add shita. So like Bryce said earlier, you don't really say shita, you say shita. Like, for the longest time, I was saying shita until sensei was like, listen, <laughs> listen, just say shita, okay? And I was like, okay, my bad. Um, so, with masen, it's you just add deshita to the end of it. So, that's the main difference. So, you can even say, like, ah, oh, nihongo o benkyo shimasen deshita. Like, I didn't study Japanese. Um, so, you can be a lot more diverse in your sentences now, and they can also get a bit longer, as you can see with the examples. So, Meri-san wa kujigoro uchi ni um, That's a lot longer than what you're used to, so make sure you're able to understand these sentences, because it's going to get a bit longer. Mm, yeah, and and yeah, the, the, the phonemes ending with a, a vowel sound do often in Japanese shorten to that, like tsu, often sounds like tsu on its own. Uh, shi sounds like just sh. And then su just sounds like just s a lot of the time, but sometimes for emphasis you'll hear people uh, like kind of emphasize the u either to be cute or to, to make a statement. Yeah, so you might. I know Mahagi Sensei tends to do this. She might say um, like kyo wa shiken desu, like oh there was a test today, and she's like trying to sound like I don't know aggressive. I'm not really sure. I do that too. Yeah. I'll jokingly be like Ohio gozaimasu. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah it's and just being me being silly but... it's common though it's very common it's more common Ooh. in anime than in real life but it's definitely common in real life too Mhm. Mm so yeah mm. you, you, and you, did you already do the the des and des I mean, it's, oh, it's the same as here. do you even listen to me Bryce I was listening. do you even yeah, I listen but... I just forgot That's, there's a difference <laughs> that's even sadder okay so <laughs> you guys have learned des and ja arimasen so like watashi wa gakusei desu I'm a student. Watashi wa gakusei ja arimasen. Well, they learn janai does. This book has ja arimasen. They want to switch to the other book. Janai does. Ja arimasen is too formal for what they used to teach. Yeah, they used to teach it a lot more formal. So your book's going to say des and janai does. This is ja arimasen is not wrong, it's just way more formal. It's, um, it's literary. Not way, way more. It's but, literary. At yeah. This point. But anyways, whatever. So, watashi wa gakusei des, watashi wa gakusei janai des. So, like, I am a student, I am not a student. Now you can say past tense. So, when I graduate next semester, um, if someone goes, 
あ、ステフィンさんは学生ですか I can say, あ、いえ、私は学生でした。I was a student. Or I can be, uh, 私は学生じゃなかったです。Wait, that is the one they use, right? じゃなかったです。Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, I was making sure it wasn't something more formal. じゃなかったです。I was not a student. So I guess if I never went to college,、um, I could say that.、Hmm. So, yeah, what do you have to say, Bryce?、Um, I, I, I particularly do appreciate you mentioning the ta indicating past tense.、Uh, even when you guys get into the casual verbs, which are a lot more useful than these, in my opinion,、uh, that rule holds true. Pretty much every past tense verb ends with, with ta.、Um, deshita, you can add that to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. There's not a lot to add here. I mean, there's no real trick to remembering it other than that ta trick you gave, I think.、Uh, uh, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? So,、uh, Janaka,、uh, Janakata, is it Janakata or is、mm. it Janaka? Janakata. So, Janakata. So, Janakata and Deshita. Is one more formal than the other? We learn. Is janakata is that past tense or is 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 deshita? Jan, janakata is past tense. So janai is the、yes. casual negative. So tashi wa braisi das. I am Bryce, right? Tashi wa braisi janai. I am not Bryce. Uh, tashi wa braisi janakata. I wasn't Bryce.、Mm, uh, or、okay. I could say, um. I am not Bryce. Or, I am Bryce. I was not Bryce.、Uh, they, okay. And they give Janakata des. So, sticking the des on the end, like they do in the book, just makes it slightly more formal, but not as formal as Ja Arimasen deshita. So, there's. Whoops, did I say Janakata and didn't put des?、Uh, I. Don't recall, but I we should probably write up a little. So let me think. So,、mm. Janai is the most casual, Janai des is the second most casual, Ja Arimasen is the most formal until you get to like literary formality, which would be Dewa Arimasen. Wait, isn't John te- technically the most? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, most J- John is like it's like、John. slang level. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could even、okay. say Kansai Ben's Yan is even more, but yeah. For, uh, so, do Janakata and、uh, Deshita do they mean the same thing? One is just more formal than the other?、Uh, no. Janakata is negative.、Yeah. So, it's saying, like, Watashi wa gakuse Janakata, I was not、okay. a student, versus Watashi wa gakuse Deshita, I was a student.、Mm. So, that's affirmative. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. So, that, so to, to, to conjugate the, the negative of Des. You pretty much just switch it to, yeah, Janai, which is,、uh, you, can, you can lengthen Janai all the way to all kinds of formalities, but in general, the one in your book is probably the way to go for now.、Mm-hmm. Don't look at Bryce's screen. He has an older model of the book.、Um, you guys have to learn something different, but. Yeah, for the exam, but you will come across this in real life too. Yeah. So it's good to know both. But、yeah. for the exam, this, this on my screen won't be on the exam tomorrow. On the, on the exam, you'll only be tested on what's in that book,、uh, what's in that box in your book. Yeah. And it's good, it's good to know why it works like it does.、Um, so you can kind of deconstruct it when you need to.、Uh, I'll do Takasan. So、okay. there's, like we mentioned before, a lot of different ways that you can place this in the sentence. I tend to favor one or two over the others, but.、Um, Essentially, it just means a lot of something. There's other words that you can use to express that too, but this is probably the most common.、Uh, so they say in my book、um, to place it, let's see, it says place it before the noun or after the particle. Oh, so I like to say, Watashi wa Kyoto de shashi no takusan torimashita. But just like you can see on my screen, you can pretty much throw that just about. Anywhere and it still makes sense. Your book also mentions mo,、uh, which you can use. So, what, what are they, how are they differentiating this? See, it says, We learned in lesson two that we use the particle mo in reference to the second item, which shares a common attribute with the first. You can also use mo when two or more people form the same activity. So, in your guys' book on page 111, for mo, it gives the example, Watashi wa kino kyoto ni ikimashita, meaning I went to Kyoto yesterday. 
And then they say, Yamushita sensei mo kino kyoto ni ikimashita. So you see, the only difference grammatically between these two sentences is they've replaced wa with mo there. But using mo either implies or relies on something else happening before for it to be adding extra context to, right? So if you're just saying on out of nowhere, Yamashita sensei mo kino kyoto ni ikimashita, and you never said anything before that, people either probably are assuming you accidentally said something you're thinking, or you just assume everybody's waiting for you to say that or something. Uh, it also provides the example in your book of when somebody buys, sees, or eats two or more things. So, Mary san wa kutsu o kaimashita. Mary bought shoes. And then, Mary san wa kaban mo kaimashita. So, Mary also bought a bag. Um, so, we say that again in like a sec- separate sentence. So um, it wouldn't be like, oh, it wouldn't be like medicine. Wa, uh, it wouldn't be like, be like, it wouldn't be like medicine. Wa, uh, kaban to, um, you know, I'm trying to say kutsu. Uh, you, can do that. Kaiba. you can say that. That's to though. Would we say that again in a second sentence? Or would we be like, um, could we say like mo in front or could we, or do we have to put mo like, in, it's sorry, <laughs> I'm getting confused. So um, there's lots of freedom there. I get I get what you're asking, and you can. So in their particular example, they're demonstrating just standalone how it works. But if I want to say that same thing that Mary bought shoes and a bag, I could say Mary san wa kutsu to kabano kaimashita, like you suggested. That implies that those are pretty much the only two things she bought, right? That doesn't say anything about it other than Mary bought these two particular things. You could also say, Mary san wa kaban mo kutsu mo kaimashita. And that's implying, like, oh, Mary bought a bag and she bought shoes too. And that's saying it in one sentence. And that's probably more common than the way they're explaining it, to be honest. Um, but for the exam, you're probably going to have a sentence like, um, Watashi wa. Gakko ni ikimas. I'm going to school. And then the prompt might be something like, Mary is also going to school. Write this in Japanese. And then you'd write, Mary san mo gakko ni ikimas. Right? But you could say, Watashi mo Mary mo gakko ni ikimas. And you would say that very commonly in, in real speech. But they're just trying to, I guess, more clearly draw the distinction between the two. Does that does that clear up? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, freedom there. So I think... Uh, yeah, so they also specifically note that mo replaces the particles wa, ga, or o in those sentences. So that is the most common use of mo, but like I said, you can also say something like um, kutsu mo kaban mo kaimashita. Uh, you can also use it when you go to places or do something on two different occasions and so forth. So the example is watashi wa senshu kyoto ni ikimashita. I went to Kyoto last week. And then osaka ni mo ikimashita. I also went to Osaka. Keep in mind with ni and e, instead of just replacing them with mo, you add mo after. So you don't say Osaka mo ikimashita. You say Osaka ni mo ikimashita or Osaka e mo ikimashita. Generally, you don't see it with e. Uh, you don't see e that often to begin with. So you'll you'll usually see things like Osaka ni mo ikimashita. So. Um, that might come up if you're, say I said to you guys, Tokyo to Kyoto ni ikimashita. I went to Kyoto and Tokyo, but I forgot that I went to Osaka too. I'd say, ah, Osaka ni mo ikimashita yo. You know, oh, I also went to Osaka. I forgot to mention it before. It's kind of the implication that it has. Uh, yeah, okay. You can use it twice in one sentence, so it wouldn't be that weird to say. So I could say, uh... I mean, maybe I'm just projecting, but I think you could say something like, Mary san mo Osaka ni mo ikimashita. So Mary also went to Osaka, also. Kind of nuanced. So you have lots of freedom with this. Again, it's a living language, so you can do all kinds of things. And even if you break the rules a lot of the time, you still can communicate. But just be sure to specifically learn the forms in the book for the exam. Stephanie, do you want to do Ichijikan? 
。OK です。はい。All right. お願いします。So, 1時間。So, g i k a n means hour, or like, yeah, it means hour.、Um, G was used in o'clock, so ichi g was one o'clock, but ichi g i k a n is one hour. So, just be careful that you don't mix those up.、Um, so, just g i k a n basically can be added after numbers, and then all of a sudden it means blank hours. So, shichi g i k a n seven hours.、Um, hachi g i k a n Is eight hours.、Um, so you might get a question on the test that's like, How long did you study Japanese、um, on Tuesday or something like that? And she expects you to know how to say, like, Nihongo o ichijikan gurai benkyo shimashita. Like, I studied about, did I say three? I already forgot. <laughs>、uh, my memory is so bad. Like, <laughs> Me too. It's、Don't、kind、worry. of tragic. It's kind of tragic. Okay. But yeah, like the point is, is like you need to be able to make sure、um, that you can say units of time. So hopefully your numbers, you know them by now.、Um, good eye, like I think Bryce mentioned earlier during the vocab glance over, is kind of means like about. So it's like、oh, about three hours. You wouldn't say like, I, I mean, you could, but. It might be more impactful if you don't use good eye. Like, I studied three hours versus I studied about three hours.、Um, so, I guess one's more dramatic than the other. But good eye is kind of like goro in that it means about, but you're mostly going to use goro for like time.、Um, like, as in ichiji goro. You wouldn't say ichiji good eye.、Um, they have the same meaning, but you use them at different times.、Hmm, yeah. And. You know, good eye, like Stephanie was saying, at a, t- at a period of time that's reasonably measurable or intended to be specific, there's no use in adding that. Like, if you asked how long class is, and class is an hour and a half, there'd be no need to say, you know, ichi ji kong hang good eye. Like, no, it's exactly an hour and a half. But if somebody asked, oh, how long was the train ride over here? You're not going to think about it and say, oh, it was three hours and 24 minutes. You're going to say, ah, you know, Sanji k o n g u r a i d e s You know, it's about three hours.、Um, just like English. Just, you know, be precise if you want to or not. Yeah.、Uh, your book covers Takasan as number seven, whereas my book is all out of order for some reason.、Um, do you guys feel confident using Takasan or would you like to go over that anymore? So, I don't want to go over it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do a few examples. So, how would you guys say Stephanie eats a lot of hamburgers? I mean, I've said that. <laughs> What? Said, yeah, I know. You're, you're a hamburger maniac, Stephanie. I am. How'd you know? So,、uh, Stephanie eats a lot of hamburgers. Stephanie s a n w a hamburger, takshan, t a b i m a s h Hi, eat a snip. Um, you could, I mean, there's like it says in the book, there's all kinds of different ways you can you can word this. I literally didn't even know that you could do any other way other than say, like, or but apparently, you can say, like, I didn't even realize that. So, you guys are off on a better foot than I've been for the past five years.、Um, rip. Yeah, rip. <laughs> F.、Um, GG. <laughs> good game. RIP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways.、Uh, <laughs> dude, those VTuber references. Okay. Yes.、Um, Toll. So, right. So. Good to go into this in a little more detail because that was the confusing point for the position word Aida, I do believe. So, Nihongo to Ego o Hanashimas. So, that means I speak Japanese and English. That gives the implication that you only speak Japanese and English.、Uh, that's probably usually what you want, but if you say that and then happen to speak another language in addition to that, people might find it kind of weird that you. Said it that way, grammatically at the very least.、Um, so it's literally just to connect two nouns. So grammatically, you can treat two nouns connected by to as if they were one big noun in a box, right? So if I wanted to say, 
ハンバーガーを食べます。I eat a hamburger, right? But if I want to say I eat a hamburger and ice cream, you just connect hamburger and ice cream to ハンバーガーとアイスクリームを食べます。And they function grammatically the same way. You just put the all after the last bit of that big block you made.、Uh, and then the other meaning is together with. Describes with whom you do something. I object to the use of the word whom there.、Uh, you <laughs> silly, outdated textbook. But、uh, so, Mary san wa su san to kankoku ni ikimasu. Mary will go to Korea with Su.、Um, that's the grammatically shortest way to say that you're doing something together with someone. I generally, like I mentioned before, would say to isho ni, but I doubt you will be tested on that yet. So don't worry about that. Mary san wa. Su san to kaimono ni ikimasu. Mary and Su will go shopping together.、Um, you could say, Watashi to inu.、Uh, like me and the dog, right? Watashi wa inu to koen ni ikimasu. I'll go to the park with the dog.、Uh, very, very useful, in my humble opinion.、Um, Okay, bun po is done. So we have some hyogen noto, some expression notes、uh, down here. So, ex no mae is often used in the sense of across the street from ex or opposite of ex. You may also hear another word that is used in the sense of across, namely ex no mukai. If something is behind ex or further away from a street and cannot be directly seen because of Intervening X in addition to calling it X no Ushiro, you can also describe it as being X no Uda. I've personally never really come across X no Uda, and since it's in Hyogen no To, you're probably not going to be tested on this. The differentiation between Mae and Mukai is pretty interesting, I think. Mae literally means before, right, in front of, and Mukai literally means across from. So, If it's across the street, like they said, you can use mukai, but you don't have to. Or you can use maya. But if it's not like across from each other, it's just, say, it's, I don't know, three streets across, you probably wouldn't ever use mukai there.、Um, this e and a bit here,、uh, you've probably heard this if you've watched Japanese TV shows, anime, manga, anything like that. Uh, it's the sound of surprise. So, if you just like burst into somebody's room and say, Give me all your money,、uh, they'd probably say, Et nani? That little et or a、ah, nani there. A、ah、is more、um, confusion and et is more surprise, I guess. You can carry out the e. So, if you tell all your friends that you're moving to America, Your Japanese friends, they might say, Eh, nande? Eh, doshite? Like, eh, why?、Uh, ah, I don't hear it as much, but it's definitely a thing.、Um, let's see. Next example is to use how to use half with units of time. So, two and a half hours' time would be niji kan han. So, the han goes after the kan. So, why is this? Because ji kan is a noun on its own, it means. A period of an hour, right? It's literally an hour's time. And then ni is to mention how many p e r i o d of an hour. So that han there goes after, versus you guys learned for like o'clock, like ni ji hung is 2 30.、Um, so it goes, it goes after the con there.、Uh, moshi mosh for answering the telephone. Don't think any more explanation needs. Hi, Moshi Moshi. Hi, Moshi Moshi. Hi, Kesatsu. Hi, Kesatsu. Hi, Kesatsu. Hi, Hanin. 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 Hi,
Yeah, yeah. So con is that four? I, I, I kind of understood it a little bit. That's that four. So like, is that because you could say like uh, nijiji uh, niji con uh, gurai, mm. which is like for about two hours. Okay. Oh, so you're so meaning you mean does it mean four two hours? No. Yeah. It was no. It was it con means like g con means hour. Yeah. Okay. If if you type mm. g con into a dictionary, it will probably translate as just hour of time or like a period no. of an hour. Mm-hmm. Niji Nikon? Niji Nikon that no that's I, I don't think that's has a meaning. Is it Niji Nikon? So Niji Kon would be two hours time. Yeah. So okay. you could add any number before G Kon and it means oh, some number wait. of hours. Are you thinking Niji Han? Right? That's mm-hmm. what you're thinking of Niji Han mm-hmm. is in half? Niji- uh yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Han and Khan sound kind of alike. Mm, so we, we it was Khan. We learned about Khan. It was like Khan mm. Khan Gurai or something about like that. Yeah, it was so she said like, Niji Khan Gurai. Niji Khan yeah, Gurai. Like, mm. Niji Khan Gurai. That two hours. About two hours. About two hours. So the Gurai meaning approximately or about, and then Jikan meaning uh, one hour, and then Ni meaning two of those. So approximately two hours, right? Niji Khan Gurai. Approximately two yeah. hours. But if you want to say Hi. approximately two and a half hours, you just add the word Han meaning Han. half. Right after yeah, niji, the um, word for hour. So, niji kan han gurai, oh, meaning about two right. and a half hours. So, that's that's how I would recommend remembering all of those concepts in, in, in one. I would train myself to remember niji kan han gurai, meaning about two and a half hours. And then if you think, well, this means about two and a half hours, and you can remember to write down that bit, you can kind of break it apart. And, Do you know, know why? Do you know why the con is in between the han? Because usually we'd learn like, oh, niji, niji, niji han, which would be like two thirty, but that's like time, right? So but this is like yeah. g on its own would be sort of clock time, like the concept of a temporal hour. But g con means, in terms of kanji, it's the combination of hour and period, like period of time. So um, to express a period of an hour. You have to have it together because jikan on its own is a, like a whole noun. It's not two words. It's one word that's just jikan. So in order to modify that, anything that you want, it can't come in the middle of it, right? Because it's one word. So G is a word and jikan is also a word. One of them happens to be one character and the other happens to be two characters. Um, so that's why the han goes in a different place there. So you would, you would never see niji... Han Khan. That would be two thirty. You'd be breaking the word. Yeah, two thirty period. Now this Khan, you can see, you can add that to other things as well. Like you could add that to the end of the word for one week to mean a period of a week. Um, mm-hmm. It's not as common because it's not as explicitly defined in Japanese that a period of a week is different from a calendar week, but an hour mm-hmm. on a clock is very different from. An hour worth of time in Japanese. Mm-hmm. So, gotcha. Not necessarily so, the most. Kan han. Sorry. So niji kan han. <laughs> yeah, niji kan han. So I I would recommend remembering it that way. So you can you can write down all the parts and think. Okay, ni is two, ji kan is a period of an hour, and then han mm-hmm. is half of that again, and then oh, gudai okay. is approximately. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, but yeah, you you will see that con with other other things in the future. It's not always explicitly required, but it's useful. So I think we should do some practice. But before we do, uh, we've gone over quite a bit, and I'm sure you must have some questions. Uh, nobody likes being asked if they have questions, but everybody likes good grades. So I would suggest if there's anything you'd like explanation on, do let us know. Um, is there any part that let, let, let me ask this what grammar concept from this chapter do you guys think is the most easy to understand and then also what do you think is the most complicated to understand because I'd like to get a, a gauge of in the future what to go over um, I have a question do you know about the test in sense uh, can you be a little more specific what do you mean well, what the um? Do you think she's gonna be making us like describe the specific date 
because I know in the past couple of lessons, in the beginning of the class, you would make us go over the full date of like what today was. So I don't know if you think that'll be more on the test as well. I think mm -hmm. if it's been on the test in the past, it's fair game that it might come up. But she generally won't heavily go over something again after it's come up once. But if there's a, something that you don't feel confident about um, from previous chapters, since it will build on itself and it is fair game, I would recommend doing your best to familiarize yourself with it as much as you can. Hi. I know. Um, so the homework you guys recently did where it asked like the date and month, that's about as far as it may go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if, as long as you did that well in the homework, you're probably fine. Also, uh, Justin, because you're, you're talking about the date, right? Mm. Yeah, I was talking about so, like, like the months too. When like the months and the dates, yeah. Here. Um, whenever she has something as a part of our oral, I've just kind of noticed the pattern that that's not normally on the actual physical text that we take like during our allotted time. Um, and that homework that we did, that page forty-four, is our oral for this particular unit, and so mm. it's. I don't think that. Uh, anything outside of what was in that oral, in which case regarding the dates, would really showcase. I would brush up on it just in case, just because it doesn't hurt. Um, but generally, whatever's on the oral, uh, concept-wise, doesn't really get touched up on during the physical or the ear or the hearing parts of the yeah. test. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's that's fair. I mean, I would prioritize the new stuff first for sure. Yeah, for sure. But I, um, it's good to be. You know, always reinforcing those old ideas, especially the ones that you struggle with. So, uh, yeah, that reminds me. The dates are probably the hardest for me right now. So, she, like, she went over those when we I, were in the middle of the test, and she was like, "Okay, here are the dates," and people were still taking the test, and I didn't get any review weird. on that. Yeah, that's odd that she would do that. Um, those, unfortunately, so because Japan, Japanese has two different numbering systems the Chinese and Japanese systems, they kind of switch back and forth between which to use very freely. So there's mm -hmm. not much to be done there outside of just rote practice and memorization. The best thing you could do is just, I don't know, like write down, like just talk to yourself, text yourself, whatever it takes. You know, say my birthday is this day. My mom's birthday is this day. You know, and then, you know, I don't know, George Lucas was born on this day. Jar Jar Binks died on this day. And yeah. Just, I mean, and just keep doing it until you can do it without even thinking about it. Um, especially if you intend to, you know, pursue learning Japanese outside of class even more and in the future. Because for me in particular, I still struggle with that. If I'm trying to say, like, a date there's probably a 50% chance I'll get something in there wrong any given time. <laughs> Cause, Same. I was yeah. muttering under my breath the current date right now because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what? Juichi Gatsu... I, I don't know. I literally like, thought it was May. I was sitting here going, <laughs> go, God. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, really? I, it's not May, is it? It's just, wait, is it December? No, it's not December. It's November right now, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's November. <laughs> it. Election day. Yeah. Was yeah. It's November. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> do better than me and Stephanie. <laughs> we have failed you. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Um yeah, that like the the numbering and counting like I was just talking to Stephanie the other day, like there, you'll you'll later encounter something called counter words that use the same numbering system that days of the month use in the beginning, which is different from you know each Nissan Yon and I still tend to forget after about three. <laughs> what it, uh, I had a question about that because for the homework, the page forty-four, I I think number three says, "Do you have uh, dogs or cats?" Mm -hmm. And then what are their names? So I have four dogs. So I put Inuga Imas, and I I used originally Yotsuno Inuga Imas, mm -hmm. but it's Yohiki is what she told me. Yohiki, yeah. yeah. So that's an example of a counter word there. Just like we have in English and Japanese, a lot of things need a word after them to to categorize them. 
instead of just putting the number at the beginning. Because, like, think, if I'm asking for soup from my family, I'll, I wouldn't say, Stephanie, give me three soup. That sounds really weird, right? I would say, give me three bowls of soup or three cups of soup or three gallons of soup. And similarly, in Japanese, you have to do that with a lot of things. In English, we can yeah. just say, I have three dogs, right? But in Japanese, you still have to add a word just like you add for bowls of soup to dogs. And that happens to be hiki. So, like you said, san, san hiki, san piki, san biki. There's all <coughs> kinds of different pronunciation variations that, because I've not been forced to practice it. I get wrong, and I think Stephanie's in the same boat. Um, <laughs> Wait, just call me out, even though you're right. <laughs> <laughs> see, I know. Uh, the, but the rules are, like, the same as, like, jupun versus golfun, right? Like, just like I still don't understand food. all that. I don't really know how that came about. I'd be curious to learn. Um, but it becomes even more of a problem later, so you have that to look forward to. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you'd say yeah, San 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 Biki is it San Biki? Did she say San? Uh, yo uh, Yo Hiki Yo Yo Hiki Yeah Yo Yo Hiki so What would Hiki in this regard mean? Hiki She said Hiki is a counter for some small animals. Yeah, it's um, it's a counter for some small animals. You're completely right. Um, so just just like you would say bowl of soup to mean the amount of soup a person would normally eat, but a small ver amount of soup would be a cup of soup. You have to add that word that just happens oh, to Another one for large something. animals. Bryce, Bryce, another one for large animals. What is it? Toll. And it uses the kanji for head, like atama. Toll. Oh, toll, okay. So, like, elephants use toll. Toll. That's interesting. Mm. So, um, so what if a really large dog? Um... Uh... <laughs> usually it has I don't. more I'm to curious. it usually has more to do with the noun rather than the physicality of it for the most part okay. um like I'm for example I'm thinking um uh, so photos right in English you might just say send me two pictures right in Japanese you use mai which means a flat object a flat piece of paper so if you have two pieces of homework, you have shukudai no ni mai, right? Two sheets of homework. So photos, because historically they were printed on paper, you would say, you know, shashi no ni mai, two photos. But now, in modern times, talking about digital photos, like posted on Instagram, you still use mai because of the historical context with the noun. I don't think you would be misunderstood if you used big animal for dog but you might be technically grammatically incorrect there but if you did that that's kind of like something you would see in like a poem or a like a stand-up comedy show like it it adds extra meaning there like if you really want to emphasize your dog is huge like the size of a horse mm -hmm. doing that might be a creative way to do so so nothing's off limits yeah but then you also get weird counters like the one for cups is also used for octopi so i mean like <laughs> really i didn't know that yeah, the one for ippai. So you could say ika o ippai kaimashita. I bought one squid, literally one cup of squid. Weird. Does it? Wait, does it ippai mean a lot? Uh, or it is that does. Another? It does mean uh, a lot. It, it also means one cup. Ippai. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, <laughs> same spelling, though. And that comes gonna... from meaning one full oh, cup. Geez. The cup is completely full, meaning it's a lot. And I'm sorry, I think I cut someone off there. No, you're fine. Uh, I, I'm gonna sound like a stereotypical Gen Z kid, but I remember I saw this TikTok where it was like, how many ways to say one? And there was like 15, 10 ways. <laughs> I'm yeah. exaggerating. But... There's a lot. Yeah, I mean, technically, you know, any counter word makes it different, and there's hundreds and hundreds of counters. So, jikan is technically a counter. Fun, meaning minutes, is technically a counter. Getsu, meaning months is actually not the counter for months nen is technically a counter meaning year kai which somebody sent a homework question about somebody said ikai uh in the chat that's number of times something happens so like hitori meaning alone is technically the way to say one person right um and that's like adi or nin is a counter as well so there's all kinds of them uh luckily if you don't happen to know it you can just say tsu uh so itsu uh, 2つ, 3つ, 4つ, 
two, two, so forth, all the way up to ten, and then they just stop using that for some reason. I don't understand why. Anyways, that's not something that's going to be on this test, but yeah, soon that will come into play. I think that comes into play two fifty one. Um, so you got a little ways to go till that, but um, okay. Does anybody want to do some amount of practice before? We call it quits. Uh, I know Why is this Zach. Late? <laughs> well, you, 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 anybody can head out at any point, um, but I will remain until there are no more questions to be asked. I know Zach wanted to go over chapter three a little bit, but we'll do that once we're finished with chapter four. Assuming Zach is still here, I think you're still here. Are you still here? Yeah, you're still He's here. There. Okay. Um, is there any point that you guys <coughs> feel more practice would help at the moment, or do you think independent study would be best for you? Um, yeah, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, what's what's up? Um, so I'm a little confused. Um, but since I mentioned in class that with the knee, the particle you use is knee is the particle for living things with emas. But you briefly said that, mm. and we haven't used it since. Yeah, so that is generally true so imas and adimas are cases that you generally use ni with so i'm trying to see if i can find an example in the book yeah so um for yeah for living things so uh for example to say i'm at mcdonald's like in this specific example i could say watashi wa makudonarudo ni imas you wouldn't use de with imas because that's just not how it works. I don't really know why. But yeah, it says, Note that arimas is different from other verbs we have seen so far on the following three counts. One, it calls for the particle ni rather than de for place description. Uh, that's true with imas as well. So um, you could say, you, you could say, otera wa koen ni arimas, the temple is in the park or at the park it doesn't really have a clear distinction just from that alone um you wouldn't say otero wa koen de arimas that would be that would be grammatically incorrect um there's all kinds of historical reasons for that that i won't bother going into but um it is worth remembering and that 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 is that is one thing that you just have to remember, and because of that, she's very likely to test you on that. So, by by that I mean if if you accidentally use de with animas to say like the t the temple is at the park, she will definitely mark off for that. I think. So, anytime you need to say where something is when using animas or animas, you would use ni and not de. Yes, in, in this context, yes. yes. According to the vocab sheet, too, it says place ni. So just look at the vocab sheet, and it'll usually tell you what to use. Yeah, yeah. You would. It, it's a general rule that yeah, if you see imas or auto, you're probably gonna have ni as your particle for for that there. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when using ni and ga together in a sentence, could you um like? go over the sh sentence structure for that yeah so well i'll base it off this one on the screen here this terebi ga arimasen so you could say mm, ie ni terebi ga arimasen right so in my house there is no terebi there's no tv um i'm trying to think of an example i could say so if i want to say my friend is at the park Say watashi no tomodachi ga koen ni imas. So marking the subject with ga there is kind of a separate block, as I'll word it, from actually describing you know where it is. Does that make sense? I don't know if that was a very clear answer. Can you repeat the example? So you said, uh, Watashi no tomodachi, tomodachi ni. Can you repeat it, please? So, Watashi no tomodachi ga, ga. koen Hai. ni imas. Yeah. And oh. the question as to why you use ga there, uh, that is 
because you are providing new unknown information generally by saying emas because if you don't know you know why 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 would you be telling that to somebody that already knows and ga tends to be used for things that are providing new unknown information so it is grammatically fixed to use that together there are exceptions didn't, to we, as well. didn't we have a conversation i believe this was like lesson two where we talked about um if someone asks you where you go to school and you could also end up saying what your major is like you would imply that information is probably something they're interested in and you would say ga instead of wa yeah that Isn't would that be something? common yeah that would that would be that would be pretty common yeah and so wa is used specifically to mark the topic right so if the topic is already stated there's no use restating it but if the topic is completely unknown then you might use ga to i don't know how to describe this clearly in english i'm thinking um so if if we're talking about my personal human relationships with other people and that's the subject i could say watashi wa tomodachi ga imasu i have friends or if you if i want to specify that now we're talking about friends for the next few sentences i might say tomodachi wa imasu instead of ga there it had it's such a nuanced difference that i really cannot provide any meaningful firm examples I, I think everybody kind of struggles with this for a long time including japanese people so absorbing these things that aren't clearly defined as rules and genki from just real world examples is all i can recommend to you and i know that's a frustrating answer but that's still what i have to do today uh, there will be times i post something online and i'll get corrected where i should have used the ga instead of wa or vice versa so, and sometimes it's just up to one's opinion, uh, if it makes sense or not. So, mm, kind of a frustrating answer, and I apologize for that. But blame the ancient Japanese, not me. 